What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got our week five NFL game picks outright versus the spread along with our locks of the week. So make sure to tune in. If you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. And let us hear in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's get right into it. And before looking at our breakdowns, I do want to highlight Odds Jam once again because it continues to be the place that I use for all of my sports betting research. Whether it's the NFL or really any other sport out there, Odds Jam is the one stop shop to maximize your odds for successful bets. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, Odds Jam has betting education, betting tools that put you above your competition. They offer live line shopping. They offer tools like their positive EV tool, which gives you line discrepancies. So you get the best odds out there, basically a mathematical edge. So you get guaranteed money in the long run because you're finding bets on sale and getting great value. Also, their arbitrage tool, which gives you equal and opposite bets for a risk-free return. So make sure to check out Odds Jam, link in the description. But now, Diving into our games, we start with the New York Giants at the Green Bay Packers. Not really at Green Bay. This game is in London, so no home field advantage for either team. But look, the Packers aren't going to need it. Let's be honest. The New York Giants are not as good as their current records. They're one of those typical early season kind of frauds, if you will, uh, because look, they're devastated at wide receiver. Daniel Jones injured subpar quarterback at Saquon Barkley and that's it and they've benefited from easy opponents the Green Bay Packers while they are not world beaters uh, and their offense isn't as elite as it once was they're still the much better team Aaron Rodgers Aaron Jones Lazard AJ Dillon give me the Green Bay Packers here all day every day Uh, the biggest question mark is are you going to take them on the spread that's what it comes down to because they are a minus eight on the spread Are they going to take their foot off the gas pedal here? Because I wouldn't be shocked if that happens. But if you force me to pick one way or the other, again, I think the Packers are so much better. All they have to do is focus in on stopping Saquon Barkley, and then everything else is going to fall into place. Daniel Jones cannot beat the Green Bay Packers or really, in my opinion, any above average team. So give me the Green Bay Packers to cover on the spread. Then we've got... In my opinion, another similar situation, Pittsburgh Steelers at the Buffalo Bills. I think this one could be a blowout. You know, Vegas agrees because this is the largest spread of the week. The Buffalo Bills at minus 14. Now, look, whether it was Mitch Trubisky or Kenny Pickett wouldn't mean a damn here. Both, you know, are god awful. I guess with Mitch Trubisky, we we can say we know for a fact he's god awful. Uh, For Kenny Pickett, it's still TBD, but uh, he didn't look all that great versus the Jets. And I know what all Steelers fans are going to say. Uh, well, what do you mean? That first interception, that wasn't his fault. That's Chase Claypool. It doesn't matter, folks. They're going up against the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo versus one of the best defenses in the NFL versus a team that has Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs. You're not keeping pace with that team. Kenny Pickett, I think he's still very, very raw. Uh, The Pittsburgh Steelers, they're banged up. And this offense just, it has issues So to me, the Pittsburgh Steelers, I don't see them scoring more than 17 points here. I think the Buffalo Bills can score easily above 30. Uh, Give me the Bills here to win this game outright and on the spread. Then we go to the LA Chargers at the Cleveland Browns. This should be a bit of a closer game. So what we know about the Chargers, Keenan Allen will be out again. Tough for this Chargers offense. You know, he re-aggravates that hamstring last week. Still don't know how much longer he's going to be out for, but good news is you still got Austin Eckler. We saw that vintage Eckler game from him last week. I told you that was coming. Uh, You know, you've still got Mike Williams, Gerald Everett, Justin Herbert, more and more, you know, removed now from his rib injury. So that's good Uh, for the Cleveland Browns. Look, they've got pieces. They stay close in games. That's that's the type of team that they will be. So that's the good news there. They've got Nick Chubb. They've got Kareem Hunt. You know, whether it's Njoku, whether it's Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones. But at the end of the day, it comes down to Bursette. And I just think that this is a little bit too much asking of him to keep pace with, you know, again, with Herbert and with all the weapons that they do have there. The good news for the Browns is the Chargers also very injury-riddled defensively. 
Uh, so I wouldn't be shocked if the Browns keep this game close the entire way and if they cover on the spread. Right now, the spread, the Browns are getting plus two and a half. So ideally, I'd take that to like plus four, plus four and a half and go with the Browns on the spread that way. Uh, but if you keep it this way, I got to go with the Chargers outright and with them on the spread, just not a big enough number at plus two and a half. Afterwards, we go to the Houston Texans at the Jacksonville Jaguars. So look, for the Houston Texans, it's similar issues every single week. It's Davis Mills showing us that he's just not that guy at the quarterback position. Uh, You got Brendan Cooks involved. You know, you got Damian Pierce doing all right. But it all goes back to Davis Mills. This is still a young and a rebuilding team. They're probably going to go with the quarterback next in next year's draft. Uh, And right now, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they're coming off a tough loss. But again, bad, bad weather conditions. Trevor Lawrence couldn't hold on to the football. This is the perfect get right game for them. Uh, I'll take the Jacksonville Jaguars to win this game. However, the spread is a little bit concerning. Minus seven, a bit of a big number. You know, we haven't really seen the Jaguars blowing out anyone. I think here that the Houston Texans are a bit tempting to go with on the spread. I'll probably go with them there, but outright, I got to go with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think offensively, you know, Trevor Lawrence over Davis Mills all day, every day. They have the more depth at the running back position better pass catching weapons, the better defense for sure. So give me the Jaguars outright. Uh, Then we go to the Chicago Bears at the Minnesota Vikings. Divisional clash here, NFC North. Uh, So the Chicago Bears uh, kind of been exposed a little bit after, you know, now getting to a bit of a tougher part of their schedule. Uh, The Minnesota Vikings took care of business in London. And now we get to see what they can do versus the Bears. This game is in Minnesota, and look, these aren't the Bears of old. I mean, even though they still don't have a quarterback, which seems to be a consistency for every single Bears team that you watch, um, the fact of the matter is that defense just can't get it done. The only kind of respectable part of this team is the rushing attack, so the good news for them is that David Montgomery probably on the right side of questionable, even though Khalil Herbert has done a great job of, you know, keeping pace uh, while Montgomery has been out. But the fact of the matter is Justin Fields right now is part of the big problem. And anytime you have the lowest passing yard total set uh, is is a problem because in this NFL that we live in right now, you cannot get away with 150 yards passing on the week as a legitimate NFL quarterback. And The Minnesota Vikings are one of the better offensive teams that the Chicago Bears have faced. They've got Dalvin Cook, they've got Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, and Kirk Cousins, when he's not making mistakes, when he's not on prime time, he's a decent quarterback, and I think that's going to be a problem for the Chicago Bears. I'm taking the Minnesota Vikings here. I just don't think the Bears uh, right now are constructed in a way that they're going to be able to be competitive in these types of games versus opponents that can score more than 20 points. So give me the Vikings to win the spread minus seven, a bit high, but ultimately I'm going to go with the team that I know can score over 20 points. So I'll take Minnesota on the spread as well. Then Detroit Lions at the New England Patriots. This is a bit tough because there's a lot of injuries here. For the Detroit Lions, DeAndre Swift not going to play. Amon Ross still questionable, so we don't really know. Uh, For the New England Patriots, Mac Jones is doubtful. They're down to their third string quarterback, but they play with the worst defensive team in the NFL. So there is that. I mean, on the flip side, the Lions can say, oh, we're also one of the best offensive teams in the NFL in terms of points scored. And that's true. But look, right now, they're a little bit beat up by injuries. This game is in New England. Uh, Bill Belichick is a guy that can, you know, do some strange things when you go up against him. And I think they're going to be able to slow down this game with the rushing attack. I think it's going to be a big game from Damian Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson. And I do think ultimately it will be close, but I'm going to take the New England Patriots here at home outright on the spread though. New England right now at minus three. If you can get the Detroit Lions at like plus three and a half plus four, I would definitely do that. You know, they've done a really good job of losing just by three points of Uh, right around that score of keeping pace with teams, of getting some garbage time points. The New England Patriots don't scare me too much offensively, so I I could see the Detroit Lions 
being a sneaky good play on the spread. Then we go to the Seattle Seahawks at the New Orleans Saints. So with the Saints, again, they are injured here as well. Jameis Winston not going to play. Michael Thomas likely not going to play as, uh, as well. Alvin Kamara, we'll see. He's expected to play, but that was the case last week. And, well, uh, it didn't happen. So that's kind of up in the air. So we're going to see Andy Dalton for the second straight week in a row. The Seattle Seahawks are underdogs here. In fact, I think a little bit uh, undervalued because the Saints are at minus five. They haven't shown us anything offensively to make us think that they're true contenders. Now, yes, New Orleans, very tough place, tough environment to play in. But I really like the Seattle Seahawks on the spread here offensively. As long as Geno Smith doesn't make killer mistakes, well, you know, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, they can cause problems. Rashad Penny, if he gets enough usage and the passing attack is dangerous, he can cause some problems as well. Uh, while, you know, the New Orleans Saints defensively, again, they are also a very good team there. I just don't know if offensively I can trust them. Even if Alvin Kamara is healthy, they're, they're a team that hasn't been utilizing him in my opinion, the proper way. So this is the caveat that I'm going to put. If Alvin Kamara plays, then I'll go with the New Orleans Saints begrudgingly outright, uh, just because I think that defense can cause a lot of issues for Seattle. But on the spread, either way, I love the Seattle Seahawks. And if Alvin Kamara doesn't play, then I'm going with the Seattle Seahawks outright as well. Then we got the Miami Dolphins at the New York Jets. So here we know that Tua isn't playing uh, for the New York Jets, we know that Zach Wilson is back, and somehow he got his first victory last week uh, versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Maybe the reason why is because he played versus Trubisky and Kenny Pickett, but I think his luck runs out here. Look, Miami Dolphins, even without Tua, uh, Teddy Bridgewater is an experienced quarterback. I think he can be a decent game manager. You've still got weapons like Tyreek, like Jalen Waddle, uh, a defense that I think is going to cause several turnovers and, you know, issues for Zach Wilson, who, in my opinion, still looks like a below average quarterback. I don't believe in the New York Jets. I'm taking the Miami Dolphins. The Jets at plus three and a half. I feel like that number should be larger in favor of the Dolphins. Again, I realize that Tua is out, but Teddy Bridgewater can get the job done still. I'm taking the Miami Dolphins outright and on the spread. Then we go to the Atlanta Falcons at the Tampa Bay Bucks. Another game with a big spread. The Bucks at minus 10. So big favorites here in Tampa Bay. The Falcons hurt. Look, offensively without Cordero Patterson. Uh, Kyle Pitts, not that he's been getting too involved either way these last few weeks, but he's not playing. So you're down to Drake London, Marcus Mariota, and a lot of kind of journeymen running backs. So uh, that's not the recipe you want versus a Bucks offense that's coming off a loss and you know Mike Evans uh, Chris Godwin Julio Jones Russell Gage Leonard Fournette a great defense at home I think this has all the makings of a blowout give me the Tampa Bay Bucks here to win outright the spread minus 10 but again I just don't see this version of the Atlanta Falcons being able to hang with Tampa Bay so I'll take the Bucks on the spread as well then we go to Tennessee at Washington you know the Washington Commanders have been one of the more disappointing teams in the NFL. Carson Wentz has been atrocious. Uh, offensively, you know, they leave a lot to be desired. Defensively, it's even worse. Tennessee, I don't think they're elite or anything like that, but, you know, they're taking advantage of their schedule and of the teams that they're playing, and I think this is another one of those cases where you just let Derrick Henry do his thing, and then Ryan Tannehill, even though that wide receiver core is a bit banged up, Traylon Burks, uh, there's still enough pieces where you can cause issues for Washington. And Ryan Tannehill probably going to make less mistakes than Carson Wentz. So I'm going to take the Tennessee Titans. I, I think this is going to be an ugly game. Washington will probably have more chances than we expect to win. But I'm taking Tennessee ultimately. Uh, I think they're the more disciplined team. I think offensively they're more trustworthy, and you don't have you don't have to worry about Carson Wentz with them. So give me Tennessee outright. Washington plus two, not that high of a number. I think Tennessee covers it if they win. Then San Francisco versus the Carolina Panthers. I think low key this can be one of the biggest blowouts of the week. The spread only plus six and a half for Carolina should be much higher. Look, they're facing one of the best, if not best, defenses in the NFL. Baker Mayfield is god-awful. Every other pass is a batted down ball. And then, you know, the remainder are like horrible decisions or interceptions. 
offensively, they're not getting their best weapons involved. DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey. The defense can only do so much. I think Jimmy Garoppolo, Jeff Wilson, you know, Ayuk, Debo Samuel, they're going to do their thing. And uh, this thing is going to be over by the start of the second half. Give me the San Francisco 49ers here to win. The four, the 49ers defense, I think, is going to have an exceptional day. I would put a decent amount of money on, you know, uh, sack totals, turnovers, maybe even a defensive touchdown here. Uh, the 49ers outright and definitely on the spread at plus six and a half. Then we go to Philly at Arizona. Battle of the birds here. Uh, the Eagles lone undefeated team in the NFL. The Cardinals, they're lucky that they played the Panthers last week. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't have won either. But offensively, they just, man, uh, they look broken. I don't know what it is, but this ain't the type of team that you want to go against to try and figure that out. And the Eagles offensively, who, I mean, it literally took like a hurricane to, for them to be partially slowed down. But on the ground, through the air, this Cardinals defense doesn't scare you all that much. And even though maybe they pile up the stat sheet uh, with throws and yards offensively, it hasn't led to a lot of scoring. The Eagles defense also underrated. I think it's going to be a classic Arizona game where they start out slow and then they have to wait until the third, fourth quarter to make it respectable and try and claw their way back in. I don't think that's the game plan you want versus this Eagles team. Give me the Eagles outright on the spread Arizona plus five. The way they've recently played, I just have zero faith in them unless they're going up against another low scoring offensive team. That's not the Eagles. I'll take Philly to cover the spread as well. Afterwards, we go to the Dallas Cowboys at the LA Rams. So the LA Rams coming off a tough loss versus the 49ers. They are favored here at minus five and a half. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys continue to do their thing while Dak Prescott is not there. Uh, but I do think here potentially that could come to an end. Uh, the Rams, one of the better teams they have faced right now. And I think that, you know, it might be close because the Cowboys, uh, they have a solid defense as well. And the Rams offensively, other than Cooper Cup and Tyler Higby, I mean, Allen Robinson, that's not working. Uh, the rushing attack, that's not working. And I mean, there's question marks in the offensive line. Matthew Stafford making some bad decisions. While well, I am going to take the LA Rams because I do think they're the better team. They've got the home field advantage. Uh, and I have more faith in Matthew Stafford uh, than what the Cowboys currently have at quarterback. I think the Cowboys are a solid pick on the spread, minus five and a half. The Rams haven't really been blowing out anyone. The Cowboys have been able to make these games that they play in kind of, you know, ugly, closer games. Give me the Cowboys on the spread. Then we go to the Cincinnati Bengals at the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, another divisional clash here. Baltimore, man, these last two weeks, leading, 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 and then just heartbreaking losses. Um, but again, I think this is one of those times where you just bet on the team that you think is better, that's more talented, that's going to rise. And I think the Ravens are the better team right now. Rashad Bateman isn't going to play here. That is, you know, a tough blow to them, but they've got Mark Andrews, they've got Duvernay, J.K. Dobbins getting more involved with the Cincinnati Bengals. They're kind of up and down, and, you know, what are we going to see here from them? I just don't know. Are we going to see good decision-making from Joe Burrow? Are we going to see Joe Mixon more involved? Uh, are we going to see the offensive line showing up? I think this very well could be a, you know, a series that's split. If the game were in Cincinnati, I'd probably be leaning the Bengals. But since it's in Baltimore, I'm taking the Ravens here outright. The spread minus three and a half. You know, if you could tease that by a point two, then I'd probably go with the Bengals. But if it stays at minus three and a half, I'm taking the Baltimore Ravens. And then finally, we got the Raiders at the Kansas City Chiefs Monday night in Kansas City. I'm going with the Chiefs. Yes, the Raiders finally got their first win of the season. But I think it's going to be short-lived. The Kansas City Chiefs, uh, give me them to win this game. I mean, I think they could easily score over 40 points, and they can do it in a variety of different ways. Uh, we still don't know whether Hunter Renfro is going to play or not, but Derek Carr just, I don't think he can keep pace with Patrick Mahomes here. And 
you know, it's been kind of disappointing. I, I'm not going to lie. I thought he would be airing out the football more. I think this, I thought that, you know, a lot more of these offensive weapons other than Devontae Adams were going to be delivering hasn't necessarily been the case. I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs here. I'm going with the better quarterback. I'm going with the home team. I will take them to win. However, on the spread, it's minus seven. You never know with these divisional games, uh, what happens, garbage time points. I will put some money on the Raiders, the spread there. But with that, we wrap up our pickums. Now looking at our locks of the week, let's start with the Packers versus uh, versus the New York Giants. I don't care that this game is in London. The Packers are so much better than the New York Giants. You know, Aaron Rodgers over Daniel Jones, give me the Packers. Then Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Buffalo Bills. Kenny Pickett versus almost any team. I'm going the other team. Buffalo Bills, though, I mean, they're an upper echelon top five team. Give me the Buffalo t- uh, Bills. That's a pretty easy one there. Then we go to the Atlanta Falcons versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Falcons are just very, very hurt at this point in time. Uh, the Bucs at home with Brady, with all those offensive weapons, are going to take advantage of that. Give me the Bucs. And then finally, 49ers. Uh, at the Carolina Panthers. I don't care that this game is in Carolina. This is, I think, my biggest lock of the week. The Panthers have looked god-awful. This 49ers defense is going to absolutely obliterate them. The 49ers are winning this game. But with that, we wrap up our Week 5 NFL game picks outright versus the spread along with our locks of the week. If you guys enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe. Give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear in the comment section. Did you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. But in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.